Sometimes you just want to kick back and relax and smash a few bricks. Thus we have Rogue Breaker, a Steam release from 2018 courtesy of The World Outside. Oh yeah, it definitely came from the world outside. As you could probably surmise from the imagery on screen, Rogue Breaker is another one of those ever-present brick-breaking games similar in vain to games such as Arkanoid or Breakout, where you use a bat to deflect a ball to destroy all the bricks on screen in order to move on to the next wave. It's pretty standard fare with certain bricks taking multiple hits to break, certain bricks containing power-ups such as extra balls, extra speed, or even extra lives, and there are a couple other bricks that you can't break or teleport and things of that nature. And when you clear a level, you're given two options that will yield you different abilities. Will you go for a slower ball speed at the cost of scoring less points, or do you fancy controlling two battles with a gaping hole in the middle? It's nothing that hasn't been seen or done before, and suffice it to say, if you've played any kind of brick-breaking game in any form or fashion, then you already have a firm grasp on how Rogue Breaker plays. The only real twist in Rogue Breaker lies in its random selection of levels. There's roughly a couple dozen levels of play, along with some bonus ones as well as any custom levels, but every game you play won't bombard you with the same set of levels played out in the same order. This random selection process keeps sessions in Rogue Breaker interesting since the level order changes. Even when you exhausted all your lives and you're prompted to try again, it's back to the beginning of a new run, only stage one is a new map standing in your way. So it's almost never the same game twice. And that makes things interesting. However, it also runs the risk of curtailing the balance as you could sometimes start with a layout that seems near impossible to clear with just the one ball and a couple lives. But such is life when you're relying on random chance. In addition to the standard game, you can also sample individual levels of play, or you could create your very own devious puzzles and either play them or share them on the Steam Workshop, which hosts other wonderful levels that you could download and play, and then instantly regret. And hey, it works. Mouse control is silky smooth and responsive. Keyboard control is a thing that's there, but really you should be using the mouse, because that's what smart people do when they want precision control over their bumper gimmick. Rogue Breaker's infatuation with the colors purple and pinkish make for a unique pixel style that has some simple looking moon blocks in the foreground, covering up a handful of these wonderfully rendered backdrops that have some minor animation bits that do not detract from the gameplay. It'll take a moment or two to see which blocks break easily and which don't, as well as which blocks contain items and which blocks take a million hits to die. But once you've figured everything out, it's not too bad. Rogue Breaker sports some rather subdued, relaxing vaporwave themes in the background while the sound effects are barely audible with the music playing. My guess is the sound files aren't loud enough because they're completely overwhelmed by the music, which also tends to have some issues in that in some playthroughs there will be no music playing even with the music volume bumped all the way to max. And I'm just left with the tinny sound effects playing in the background. It's probably a bug in the settings, but it's happened more often than not, and the music does contribute to the atmosphere of the game, so playing a session without the music feels a bit empty and shallow and stuff. Overall, Rogue Breaker is a simple block breaking game that does not change the wheel but more than satisfies for a quick run or two whenever you just want something to play that isn't too taxing on your brain. It's got a couple of maps laid out that are either built in, unlocked, downloaded from the workshop, or built by your own hand, so there's a bunch of stuff to do here and for a few bucks of mild entertainment, it's perfectly acceptable random brick breaking fare, an otherwise good way to spend a couple quick hours.